Amen. Um, well, I just, uh, I am not ashamed of the promises of God. I am a 69-year-old, healthy, wealthy, old man. I have no pain in my body. I have absolutely no pain in my body. I can bend over. I can do push-ups. I can... Um, I can take the trash out. I can wash the counter. There you go. I can take dishes out of the dishwasher and have to bend over and pick them up. I do that many, many times, you know, as exercise. You get to live. My bills are paid. I'm not in debt. I love God. Yeah. Praise God. But you have to do what he says. Yeah. It's called obedience. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I have enough evidence that would prove that I let the word become life in my life. Amen. How many brought a Bible today? Yes, praise God. Mm. I got this from the Bible. All right. I got it. Oh, heavens, I got a check in here. Wow. I check my Bible. I haven't opened my Bible since Wednesday. <laughs> Better to <than> crack <laughs> Oh. Good thing I had it on the computer. All right, say this with me. I am. I am. Everything, everything the Bible says I am. Says I, am. I have, I have everything, everything the Bible says I have. I have. And, I and I can do, and I will do, I will do. Everything. 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 Not, not selective everything. Not selective. Yeah, okay, I got a little quieter there. Um, everything the Bible says. And I'm so thrilled today that I'm going to let this word become life in my life. Amen. Oh, I do want to say hi, Stu. You said good morning to me. Uh, I'm sitting over there at the computer, but Reverend Connie is controlling the computer. So, uh, so uh, good morning, Stu. Um, we love you, and uh, we, uh, we're looking forward to you being here so you can meet the Deeks and, and also the kid. So we, we have the kid and the deeks. Uh, we, we have it all here. Amen. So praise God. Amen. I'm excited today because this is going to be my last message for a while. Oh, that was the right response from my son. <laughs> Turn with me to the revelation, the revelation. We've been talking a lot about uh, apocalyptic books. And uh, uh, just real quickly, um, when Daniel was given the visions and the dreams, God said to him at the end of it to seal up the book because the time is not yet, it's for the end. Seal it up until the end. And so, as we have found, as his dreams progressed, we found that they were really a repeat, but an enlargement. How many enjoyed that phrase, repeat and enlarge, amen? But when we get to John's revelation, which is where we're at, you're going to chapter five is where we're gonna begin, but actually I'm, going to quote uh, uh, the first chapter and a few things. When God gave John this revelation, he said, write it down yes. and send it to the seven churches then. Yes, yep. So the now would have been 2,000 years ago. Yes. Daniel's prophecy was not for another 600,000 years. But John is saying, write it down now, send it to the seven churches because it must shortly come to pass. If 2,000 years ago was shortly, we must be really getting stinking close to it right now. Two days. <laughs> Any second now. Any second now. So here's the problem. We look at uh, apocalyptic prophecies and books and say it's always for the future. Well, Maybe not necessarily. If you have a dream, uh, many times it's what happened in your past, what you're going through now, and a glimpse of the future. Yes. And so revelation is simply a revelation of what is going on right now, that uh, God is walking, Jesus is walking amongst the seven candlesticks. That was, God, uh, John was saying that's what's happening right now. Jesus is walking among the seven candlesticks. Well, he's not here. Is he coming again? Well, he is here. 
He's walking among the candlesticks. So as we go through this today, I don't want you to push it off too far. I want you to catch a glimpse of what is really going on 2,000 years ago today and this year as it unfolds. Are you, are you good? Yes. Revelation 5, 1, uh, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within on the backside sealed with seven seals. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Who's sitting on the throne? God the Father is sitting on the throne and he has a book that has seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the seals and to read the book, neither to look thereon. All right, here we go. Today we're going to be talking about from the four corners of the earth. From the four corners of the earth. That's the message for today. And we're going to begin with this scroll with the seven seals. It has to do with the revelation. Please read the first chapter, first verse. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ. As soon as we think this is the revelation of end times, we've already gone off uh, into la-la land. This is not the revelation of the devil. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. What's this book about? Seeing Jesus. Seeing Jesus not as one coming in the future, but now. So in heaven, God the Father has got this book. In this book is what he has dis, de, uh, designed from the beginning. Yeah. This, is, this is Genesis, and that was unveiled and yeah. showed to us. And then the prophetic apocalyptic books, he said, well, some of it's sealed until the end. Yeah. And uh, how many has finished my book? Yeah. Okay, so you know you have to get to the end. Yeah. So you're only halfway through faith if you've only read halfway through the book. <laughs> Does that make sense? So a lot of people don't read the Old Covenant because, well, that's too hard to understand and it's, it's, it's come and gone. Well, no, it's the prophetic word of what's going to happen today. Some people don't read the Revelation because they can't understand it. Well, we're just going to read the whole thing. How many wants just to read the whole book? All right. Well, there's some prophecies that was prophesied. The New Testament is talking about those prophecies that are fulfilled and still will be fulfilled. But who can take this scroll and open the seals? Well, uh, he was sad they could find no man. But one of the elders, verse 5, says, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath, past tense, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. All right, 2,000 years ago, John has a vision. And God says, I have a book with seals on it. There's going to be seven seals. There's going to be seven trumpets. There's going to be seven bulls. There's going to be seven vials. There's going to be seven plagues. There's going to be seven woes. And whoa, 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 whoa. And then that's when everybody gets really scared. But God is saying, I'm a God of love. And I'm a God of wanting to let you know what's coming. And uh, there's going to be life and death, and I give you a hint, choose life. And so that's the whole idea of that. And the revelation of Jesus Christ is he's the one that paid the price so you can make the right choice. So all of this is really good news. In fact, revelation is the fifth gospel if you want to go that way. So Jesus has prevailed to open the seals. Hath. So when John saw this vision, well, guess what? Jesus had already ascended to heaven when John was on the Isle of Patmos. Hath, well, then just a while ago, (laughs) Jesus ascended and God hands him the book 
and says, you can open the seals. You've prevailed to open the seals and John sees it. Oh, Jesus has prevailed to open the seals. So do you think he waited 2000 years before he could peel off one at least to see what was like? Talk about patience. <laughs> Revelation six, let's go to that. Revelation six and verse one. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals. I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals. He saw the first seal being opened. 2,000 years ago, he saw yeah. right. one of the seals being opened. And actually, he saw four being opened. And uh, we've already discussed that. The first four seals were the four horsemen. If you have not heard that message, please go back and, and listen to that. Yeah. But the four horsemen, the white horse, red horse, black horse, pale horse, white horse comes to conquer by deception and religion. He's, he's got a bow. This is not Jesus coming on this white horse. When Jesus comes, he comes with a sword. And there's blood dipped. And his name, the word of God, is written on his thigh. This guy is a, a nice guy. Jesus. Jesus did not come to send peace on the earth. The Bible says, Jesus himself said, I came to uh, bring a sword. I'm dividing sheep and goats wheat and tares, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the enemy. Uh, Jesus is trying to make it clear, yeah. you know. But he conquers through the deception of religion. The red horse, well, now there's war of religion. Mm -hmm. It creates a war between religions, 33,000 denominations. Everybody believes they're right. Yeah, right. I believe that they're not all right. Two ways of saying that. All right, one word, all right. And another way of saying that. Black horse, uh, economic and moral collapse. We are, uh, Reverend Ryan has a history major and he made a comment on my four predictions, my four prophetic uh, major events that I thought I saw this year. And he said, oh man, I, I have a history major. And he went on to say, these are exactly the four things that empires rose and fall based upon. I thought, good, because I never liked history. <laughs> I never studied that, so I did not get that from history books. I, I, you know, I got that from my future book. Right. I have 2020 vision, spiritually and physically. The spiritual is going better than the physical. Okay, so anyway, he's opening these seals. Famine, or excuse me, economic and moral collapse. I mean, those morals have totally collapsed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My goodness, come on. Uh, we, we already know this black horse must be riding. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Okay, and then pale horse. Natural famine. I mean, even in the association, uh, we have three different organizations that are feeding people. Uh, giving them food, paying their bills, etc., and uh, you know, people are in trouble. Yes. But then the Bible says, if you don't work, you don't eat. So you know, there's another side to that. Yes, sir. You can give people handouts, but if they never decide to get a job and quit being lazy, I don't know how long I'm going to support something like that. Right. You know, you need to hear the gospel. You need to have the divine order of giving. You need to get a job. You need to pay your tithe. Because you're not going to prosper just, I love Jesus. Right. You know, that's, that's anti-Christ. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a bad gospel, you know. This pale horse is coming and it'll be natural famine. Well, what's happening? Well, they were deceived with religion. Now they're fighting with their religion. And now their morals are in the toilet because they haven't believed the true God. And then a uh, natural famine. And then I simply say famine of hearing the word. Sure, yes. I don't think it's a famine of preaching the word. I think it's a famine of hearing the word. People don't want to hear the truth anymore. Yes, right. sir. Yeah. Don't tell me the truth. I know what I believe. Yes, right. sir. That's it. I know everything. I, don't, I, I just watch, uh, you know, the Internet church for entertainment purposes only. I don't. Yeah, I just want to see the pre preacher sweat, spit, and jump around. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think it's a famine of the ears, not necessarily of the voice. I think the truth is always going forth. 
But people don't want to hear it anymore. Because I just want to live the way I want to live. And that's this progression. I mean, he would say, well, I, I, it seems like we're there. Seems like we're there. Check. Okay. I guess four seals have been opened. Revelation 6, 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal. Oh, man. This one is not fun. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. And for the testimony. In other words, they actually have to have enough evidence right. to, con to, to cause someone want to kill them for the word of God and the testimony. Right. There's a whole sermon on that. I guess I'm just going to bypass that right now and get right back to my notes. All right. <sighs> Which they held... And they cried with a loud voice, How long, Lord, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And uh, white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that they should be killed as they were, should be filled, should be fulfilled. Uh, do you know that uh, these souls date all the way back to people that were sawed in sunder, asunder for their testimony. Yes. Yeah. Throwed in lion's dens, throwed in fiery furnaces, killed for their testimony, yeah, tortured. One guy hung upside down on a cross. Yes, and then people say, I'm being persecuted. Oh, give me a massive break. Most of your persecution is someone telling you the truth and trying to discipline you and you don't want to hear it. Right. Nothing to do with real persecution. Right. Can, you endure? Can you endure this persecution? Well, it looks like somebody still is going to. Yes, sir. Happy, happy dedication. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> oh, sign me up for this. I want a white robe. <laughs> I've been looking for a white robe. Before Labor Day. <clears throat> I'd rather wear blue linen. Uh, Fiber, uh, microfiber. This came from Australia. Don't make you sweat. A great pastor friend of mine in Australia, he said, I got to take you shopping for some microfiber suits, you know? And I said, okay, you know, well, I'm thinking he is going to take me shopping. So I picked out two. I tried them on. This was one of them. Yes, this would be how many years ago? Uh, a long time. Well, 23 years, and I still fit into it. I just want you to know it hasn't been altered. But anyway, uh, we got to the counter, you know, and I'm thinking he's going he's gonna to pay for it. And he just turns and walks away. I'm thinking, I, I, I guess I'm going to have to buy this. It's going to be a little tough to put it back right now, you know. I was kind of in a spot. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, I'd rather wear blue today than a white robe. Thank you for following my message. <laughs> it cost me some money to buy these two uh, microfiber suits, but it'll cost you a lot more to get one of those white robes. It doesn't really mean that these... People are crying out. I want to take you all the way back to Abel where his blood cried out. This is the blood that's crying out. Life is in the blood. The soul is in the blood. Uh, that's another sermon. So there are still going to be blood sacrifices that are going to continue to cry out. So this has been, is now, because there is martyrs around the world right now. No, none of you are one, so quit whining and griping about that, you know. Revelation 12, 11 says, Who will overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and loving not their lives unto the death? That's where this verse would fit in if you would like to chronologically step it up a bit. 
you're going to have to have a testimony before you ever get to loving not your life unto the death. Yes, All right. That's the fifth seal. All right. All right. Is that happening? Well, like I just said, people have already been there. There's already souls under the altar. Yes. You know, will there be more this year? Probably. Probably. All right, the next one, the sixth seal. Ooh. This is where people get freaked out. Are you with me? This is where people say the rapture is going to happen back there uh, before the fifth one. Uh, I didn't read it in there. I, I, I didn't see. Don't worry. Please, John didn't say, now, do not bother reading from here because you won't be here. I mean, there's no fine print. He just, he just kind of kept on reading there, you know. <laughs> Revelation 6, 12, and behold, when he had opened, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell on the earth, even as the fig tree casts its untimely figs when it was shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed like a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of its place, and the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, every bondman, every free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains and said unto the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb hide us from the father and the son for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand all right now if you look at any end time teaching, uh, you've got the earthquake is going to blow up a bunch of smoke and it's going to cover the sun and that's going to make it black. And then at night it will appear a, a blood moon because of the darkness from that or possibly a nuclear fallout is going to do all of this. And then the earthquake is, is moving the mountain and the stars, the literal stars, are actually going to fall from heaven and it's just going to be horrible and, and my God, what are we going to do? Were there actually a leopard and a bear and a dragon that came out of the sea? In Daniel's dream, it really wasn't, was it? Actually, it was nations that was coming out of people. So it's, it's called symbolism. And, and if we're going to try to make this literal, well, then I don't want to be here if this is happening, so I'm going to go back and believe in the rapture. Or if this is the revelation of Jesus Christ and he's preparing me to be a witness in the last days, to testify of his goodness and his greatness, to be an example of what it is to serve God, well, then I better figure out exactly what he's trying to say here. How many is interested in my take on this? Well, an earthquake. Well, that's a religious, political, and military foundations of the earth are shaken. All the foundations, all the political, religious, military foundations are shaken. Sun is black. Isaiah 62, darkness will cover the earth. Moon is red, gross darkness the people. The revelation of God has become dark in the earth. Yes, sir. Yes. I wish. And the understanding of the people is even more gross. They got all sorts of weird, stupid, religious doctrines going around. Yeah, that's right. The stars fall. Ruling powers fall. Religions. Mm -hmm. Entertainment. I wrote down here someplace, uh, you, you read in the news, uh, a lot of stars are now becoming Christians. I wonder if they're really becoming Christians or they're assimilating into that religious church which gives them some sort of credibility. Right. Stars are falling. Heavens is opened. 
Isaiah 6, 2, the glory is going to rise on you. It's going to be an outpouring of his spirit. Well, all of this other stuff is happening, but God's got a remnant who he's going to, he's going to pour his spirit on. That's what we're after today, church on fire. Outpouring of his spirit to be a witness. Mountains removed, kingdoms of this world. Kingdoms of this world, mountains, kingdoms. They lost their influence. The mountains removed. They lost their influence. Kings, mighty, captains, rich, they hide in the seven mountains. They hide in the seven mountains. The wrath of the Lamb has come. What's that mean? Well, separation, it's harvest. Who can stand? All right, I've had this slide and I've showed this many times, but this is where it fits again. Here's the throne of God. God is setting up there, right? The lamb is at his right hand. We're supposed to be praying your kingdom come. We're not supposed to be praying, stay there and get me out of here before trouble hits. Thy kingdom come. What's his kingdom? Well, it's like the seven spirits of God. It's his purpose, his plan. And then the mountain of God is, is, is supposed to rule on the earth and eventually will, according to Daniel's prophecies. After all, these other kingdoms are destroyed and brought down, the kingdom of God comes. Some may remember the statue, the Roman and the, uh, the Medio Persian, or the Greece, and, and the, or Babylon, and all the way down to Rome, and revised Rome, and the, and the backslidden church in Rome, papal Rome. And then the kingdom of God destroys those ten toes. So the whole revelation of all of these uh, apocalyptic books is Jesus is coming and establishing his kingdom. Yes, sir. He's been doing that, actually, for quite a while. Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Um, how do we, this is the kingdom in the seven mountains and the seven spirits. This is one slide that shows all of it. The seven mountains is arts and entertainment, government, media, education, religion, business, and family. These influence all of society. They're designed by God to influence them godly. Arts and entertainment is supposed to be busting a move and bringing on some messages. Government is the government of God. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Media, it's supposed to be reporting the good news of the gospel. Education is supposed to be learning and training. Um, it's supposed to be the Bible. It's supposed to be the Torah. Yeah. Right. Religion is supposed to be. It's supposed to be God. Yes. Right. Business, business advancing ministry. Put your hand to something. God provides a a, a garden to take care of and work in. Yes. And family. It's supposed to be the family of God. Right. Well, the world has uh, distorted all of these things. Many stars are becoming Christians in the arts and entertainment. Uh, I wonder if that's the white horse riding with deception. Government, uh, the nation is believing for a president to be the savior. If we can just get the right guy in, he'll save us. I used to preach in Cuba. I realized I didn't, didn't have a Christian president there. And I thought, well, it doesn't change the fact that I can still preach the gospel and people got healed and delivered and saved. Right. His kingdom bypasses this stuff. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to fight the government. Well, why aren't you the government? Right. Yes, sir. That which is in the center. I don't have to fight something that's going to fall. Yeah. Media, programming the mind. Education, take God out of the schools and teach humanism. Religion, assimilating into false church. Business, wealth without God brings sorrow. Nate brought that out in the offering. You gain the whole world, lose your soul. But being poor isn't holy either. 
business is one of the mountains that God established. And then family. You know, I wrote down run home to mommy syndrome. Well, that's been going on for years, you know. Things aren't working out, I'm going to run home to mommy. Um, if we advance it to today, it's kind of like this. If you have an alternate lifestyle, you can always run home to mommy because you can do no wrong. My child's an angel. They can never do any wrong. They're exempt, exception from the rule. Someone else tells you the truth and convicts you and disciplines you. You can always run home to mommy because mommy will say you're okay. Wrong family. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a distorted family. Or run home to your, your two dads or run home to your two moms. Or can, I, can I hammer on that for a while? These mountains will fall. They'll be removed out of their place. That's good news. I'm tired of that yes. nonsense. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You don't want to be responsible. You so you run home to mommy and live in her basement so you don't have to work. It, it's sad, uh, you know, a 40-year-old baby is living in mom's basement because he doesn't want to get a job. Right. How, how many of that is around the world today? Right. Right. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Well, our... What do you think? Do you think God should open this seal and shake those mountains? Yeah. Yeah. Shake this security? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Isaiah 11, 2, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom, understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, spirit of knowledge, and uh, spirit of the fear of the Lord. So I've listed those seven spirits there. So apply it to... We need understanding when it comes to entertainment. What's the, what's the meaning of the message? How, can you distinguish the message? Right. So we need the spirit of understanding when you turn on the TV. Yeah. Yeah. Spirit of might, government, champion, force, power. Well, what champion do you want? Goliath or David? Which champion do you want? I think we already have a champion. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Uh, spirit of knowledge for the media. Why? Because the media, it means cunning. Uh, we need to recognize it. We need to be aware of it. What, yes. what is the media saying? Right. A spirit of wisdom for education. Uh, wise, skillful. We're supposed to learn. We're supposed to be educated how to skillfully do something. Right. Yeah. Right. People going through school now, they can't even, you know... I hear a lot of what is not being taught in the public school system. <laughs> the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Boy, is that gone. That's over religion. Reverence. Moral fear. There's no fear of the Lord in the church. They'll just assimilate into anything. They'll believe anything. They'll want to make waves. And the spirit of counsel over business. That means advice, plan, purpose, guide, business. You need advice. You need counsel. You need the spirit of counsel. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm going to run my own business. You can't even keep a job for six months. If you can't keep a job for six months, I don't think you're going to run business or your business. You can't even run your own business. It's, you have to have a plan. There's got to be a purpose for it. It's not just nine to five, pay the bills. Yeah. There's supposed to be a purpose for it. We have business advancing ministry. Your business is supposed to advance ministry. It's supposed to be, provide a service and a, and a product. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. That's over family. Who's Lord of the family? Mama? Mama. Who's Lord of the family? Your two dads? Who's Lord of the family? Your two moms? Well, was somebody told me if you take, uh, I don't know, probably shouldn't go there. <laughs> Not everybody can handle the truth that comes out at Born Again Men. <laughs> two rabbits uh, was being chased by a pack of wolves. 
And uh, the rabbits finally found some thicket and hid in these two rabbits. And they sat there for a while and one looked at the other. He says, well, do you think we ought to make a run for it? Or do you think we just ought to stay and for a while and outnumber them? <laughs> if that was two male rabbits, they would still be two male rabbits. I don't care how long they sat there. Yep. <sighs> Moving right along here. <laughs> Spirit of the Lord over the family. That means Yahovah. Spirit of Yahovah. Father. He's the true father. I say he's the true father. That's the true family. Yeah. All righty. Did you like that? Yeah. Okay. Now we're finally getting to the message. Good intro. Thank you for the. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, my son is really with me today. You know. <laughs> Appreciate that. I don't know if he's butter, buttering me up for something. He hasn't told me. Oh yeah, he's he's preaching next week. He wants this to go good. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation seven, and after these things, after all this stuff. However, are you, are you thinking that a lot of this stuff is already happening? Yeah. Sure. Like it. Has, has this, is this sometime in the future or do we see all this stuff happening now? Yes. Yeah. We see these mountains being shaken. People aren't yeah. trusting the media. They don't trust the government. Yeah. The government has already lost its influence. People are saying, please don't give us another election with the two same people. Right. <laughs> Change is as good as a rest. Give us, you know. <laughs> Do we have to have the same bird with two different wings flopping around again? Give us an antichrist. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This isn't too far in the future. I think this stuff has already happened. Just trying to help you out here. <laughs> After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. I'm putting the four angels, four corners, and four wings all into one message called the four corners of the earth. <laughs> so that Pastor Aaron can preach next week. I didn't want to extend this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they were standing there that the wind should not blow on the earth nor the sea nor any tree and I saw another angel ascending from the east interesting having the seal of the living God and he cried, cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea In other words, that wind's going to hurt. I don't want to go too fast. I want you to catch the idea. This angel says, don't hold the wind back because this wind is going to hurt the earth and the sea. So hold it back until, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, until we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Okay, so I don't have to fear the wind if I'm sealed. That's the, that's, the, that's the good news in this. Well, if the wind blows, you know, I can close the door for crying out loud. You know, go to bed or something. Wait till it dies down. The wind usually dies down later at night. What's the message here? Well, there's going, to be, there's going to be some judgment coming from four corners. Yes. I mean, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the earth. It's going to hurt the sea. It's going to hurt the trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this winter, cover up your spruce trees. <laughs> Don't have to worry about the other trees. The leaves are all blown, gone already with the wind. 
All right, here we go. Let's look at this a little more. Four angels. Everybody say four angels. Well, who are these four angels? Well, they're at the four corners, north, south, east, west. Angels are messengers. In fact, they're coming with a message of the wind. The wind is a message. Airmail. They say, through study, you can Google it yourself, U-R-I-E-L, Uriel, is uh, the angel from the north, and his message is knowledge and wisdom, meaning to say he's actually the one that comes from the throne of God, which he sets on the, on the north. If you understand the constellation, he sets on the north, and the constellation revolves around the north. Yeah. All right? And so the Satan wanted to set up his kingdom on the sides of the north. So he knew the north was where knowledge and wisdom comes from. Well, then the enemy has also got a little uh, subcategory uh, department there in the north. Uh, I think it's the North Pole, and he has some elves. I thought you'd get a chuckle out of that. And, and so he knows if you've been naughty or nice. And he knows if you've been paying attention to what he's talking about. And so he comes with a message. Michael is from the south. Michael is uh, a, a wonderful uh, angel. And uh, uh, he brings truth and courage. So it's almost like uh, the north is God bringing a message. And from the south, we respond to the message. So if God gives us knowledge and wisdom, we can respond with truth and courage. We receive the truth, so we have courage. We, we see what's going on. Well, we have courage. God's telling us what's going to come. We don't have to fear if we obey what he's saying. Raphael is from the east, and that means healing body, mind, and soul. Coming from the east. Jesus is returning from the east, they say. They're looking to the eastern gate. Healing of mind, body, and soul. We just talked about God looks at you as a spirit, soul, and body, and he wants to sanctify you wholly. I'm, I'm committed to that. I want to be able to see 2020 vision spiritually. Uh, my soul, I want peace. I want joy. My emotions should be under control. I want a healthy body. This is the temple of the Lord. I want him to be proud of this temple that he lives in. Amen. I told that temple of the Lord over there, she looked pretty fine today. Fine specimen of a daughter of God. <laughs> Healing body, mind, and soul. This should, so God wants to make us whole. And then Gabriel from the West is understanding prophetic messages. So again, this is our response. Yes. So these four messages are coming to us and, and it's our response to those messages. How many wants to say amen? So be it unto me according to your word. Yes. Well, if, if, if it's knowledge and wisdom, well, then I'm going to respond. You know, well, that, if it's the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, well, then that's what I'm going to do. Right. And I'm going to have the courage to stand up and walk in truth. Yes. Yes. I can't re-preach all of that. All right, next one. Four corners. Everybody say corners. corners. <clears throat> A corner comes from this... Um, Greek word that means angle. It's like an angle. So it's a square angle. Well, it depends if you've got a flat earth or a round earth, but it's a square angle. It's still an angle. <coughs> and it means knee. So a knee can be at an angle. Yeah. Or it can be straight. But in this case, a corner is an angle. And it also means to bow. Okay. So when this, this corner is going to cause people to bow their knee. Right. Okay. Okay. You know, when someone gets in a corner, yeah. when a wild animal is cornered, well, they're either going to have to bow their knee and surrender or they're going to Throw a fit. All right. I submit to you that these four corners or these four 
foundations. It, it's the four corners of the earth, the foundation of the earth. God set it on foundation. It's the military foundational power. It's the religious foundational power. It's the political foundation power. And it's the economic foundation power. Every, all the world exists on those four powers. And, and you will have to either bow your knee to them or not. Four corners, this judgment is coming from the four corners. It's going to reach everywhere. Yes. But in, in prophetic books, it usually talks about a specific area. Many times that's Israel. <clears throat> but I think it's Sandusky too. Right. Sure. All right, are we okay? <clears throat> okay, four winds. How many has heard of the wind of change? Yes. The winds of change. Wind uh, comes from this word that means to blow, breath, force. Also means to wax cold. The love of many will... So when this wind <clears throat> starts to blow, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do two things. It's going to cause someone to wax cold. It's, it's going to cause someone to understand the prophetic word that God is saying. Yes. Yeah. The blow, the breath, the breath of God. The breath of God is either going to cause you to come alive like a, an army. I love that. You know, uh, he turns uh, graves into gardens and dry bones into armies. The breath of God does that. But see, then the breath of God on other people causes them to wax cold. Yeah. Wow. Yes. It's pretty wild. Wow. Same wind. Yeah. The Same wind. Right. So I, I believe there's four winds. The wind of change. Sure. No wind blows in and there's change. The wind of opposition or temptation or conflict. Opposition, you're trying to go one way and the wind's blowing against you. Sure. The wind of temptation, ah, oh, blow over there, blow in there. <coughs> or the wind of conflict. Okay. Number three, the wind of the Holy Spirit. The wind is always... Uh, many times referred to the Holy Spirit. And a rushing mighty wind blew in and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spoken tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The wind of the Spirit. That's breath. And it, it's a prophetic word. So <clears throat> the wind of the Holy Spirit has been blowing in here for the last several weeks because it's been a prophetic word. Yeah. That's going to cause you to bow your knee or straighten your knee and Run away from it. It's going to cause change. Right. You, you cannot hear this prophetic word and not change. Right. You are going to either decide, no, I'm going with the black helicopters. I'm going with the a rapture. I'm out of here. I don't care. I'm going to live like what I want to. Uh, you know, I only have a few short live years, so I want to eat, drink, and be merry. And I'm not, You'll choose something. Yes. But this is a season of change. And then the last one is the wind of judgment. Oh, there it is, the wind of judgment. Well, I don't, I don't mind judgment. Yeah. It shows who you are or who you are. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, judge me. I have a healthy body. My bills are paid. Yeah. Married to a beautiful woman. Have a worldwide ministry. Things are well. Right. I mean, you can, you can be jealous of that. You can condemn that. You can say whatever you want to say about that, but do you know what? I don't care. <laughs> I lay my head in the pillow at night and I have peace. How about you? Are you still in turmoil, still fighting, still struggling? Is the war over? When, when Jesus is Lord, the war is over. This wind blows, blow on. I feel good about this message. Just take a sip of my Nespresso coffee. If you've ever wondered what's in here. 
Why is he always so happy when he preaches? Espresso. Come and take a sip if you're not sure. Wind of judgment, wind of judgment. God is going to judge us righteous. If we're righteous. He's going to judge us as wheat if we are wheat. He's going to judge us as sheep if we are actually sheep. Not based on what you think, based on what he thinks. Thus enter the fear of the Lord again. I'm really enjoying this because this is my last one. <laughs> Wind of judgment. All right. Okay, uh, the earth, the sea, the trees. Uh, it's going to hurt. Is that what it? When these winds blow, it's going to hurt? The earth, it comes from a Greek word there. Soil, region, ground, country, land. Well, you're made out of the ground. Yes. Yes. So it's dwelling place. It basically means dwelling place. God created the earth as a what? Dwelling place. Right. Don't hurt the dwelling place. Mm -hmm. Just want you to try to think. I want, I want the seal of God in their head before you hurt the dwelling place. But where do you live? Are you where God wants you to be? If you're not where God wants you to be, then that dwelling place is going to get hurt. Because it's going to be a specific thing at the end of the day. I want to be at the dwelling place where there is revival. I want to be in a dwelling place where the wind blows in and people are set on fire with the Spirit of God. Yes, it's the Spirit of God. Yes. So I need to be where God is moving. But then again, I need to be where the wind is blowing. And yet someone else is going to say, I don't want to be there where the wind is blowing. Because it judges me. But if you get filled with the Holy Ghost and become a witness and start laying hands on the sick and people recover, you're going to say, blow on, wind, blow. Right. Blow again today. I really enjoyed that yesterday. Yes. Wind of change. You okay? Yeah. See, it, it literally just means salt. Sea yeah. is always representative of nations and people groups. Right. Remember? These four beasts came out of the what? Sea was nations, kingdoms, people groups. So don't hurt the people groups. But most specifically, don't hurt the salt of the earth. The Bible says we're to be the salt of the earth. Are you salty? Have you lost your savor? Do you bring freshness to anybody or do you just bring stupidity to them? Oh, it was Anthony, we put the pepper shaker in front of you, and you said you've been hankering that for, uh, for two or three days. You're just looking forward to it. <laughs> Salt of the earth. Trees, everybody say trees. And this Greek word is guardsman. Wow. <laughs> well, trees are provision. God said, I give you all the trees of the garden as provision. Yes. Things that you can eat. And then I've got you this tree of life, which is really the guardsman. Mm. Wow. But then you have a choice. Yeah. Don't eat this one. Mm -hmm. yes. There's only one tree you can't eat out of. And dear God, you'd think our ancestors would have figured out. <laughs> yeah, let's just ask God. <laughs> but no. Oh. We got to go to the one he said don't. Yeah. Well, it's provision. And that's the lie. Wow. Yeah. This will provide you with the ability to be as your own God. Wow. Right. I, don't, I don't need 
anybody else, anything else. I don't need the church because, dear God, you know, just look at me. I am just the epitome of all-knowing, all-knowing knowledge. You idiot. You're going to be out of the garden in a flash. And then I'm going to put an angel with a sword to keep you out. You, because you can't live eternally in that state. So a tree represents choice between obedience and obedience. You say, well, it should be disobedience. No, you're, you're going to obey one. I mean, it's not about disobedience. It's about are you going to obey God or are you going to obey the enemy? Both of them are obedience. The wind is blowing to dis make you decide something. And then it means redemption. Trees are redemption. Jesus hung on a tree, the Bible says. Did you get anything out of this so far? All right. I think I'm ready to move on, but I lost my place in my notes. Okay, here we go. So it's just a choice. You're going to obey one or the other. God's seal or the mark of the beast. That's what, that's what it is. It's been that end time sermon forever. Wind is going to cause you to go one way or the other. Economic collapse is going to set you up to make a choice. Yes, sir. Famine of hearing the word is going to push you into a choice. Right. Your mountain being shaken is going to cause you to want to hide in it. Hide under it. You're going to run to that because that's the only thing you know to run to. Right. You haven't ever figured out how to run to God yet. God's seal or the mark of the beast. The word seal means signet, fence, and protection. Wow. So the angels are saying, uh, don't, don't let this wind blow until my servants, servants. Okay. That, mean, that means obey God, right. not your idea of what obeying God means. Mm -hmm. Actually obey God. Like, pay your tithe, read your Bible, go to church, love the brethren, and be a witness. Mm -hmm. Grow up. Yes. Not your religious idea. <laughs> so, the mark of the beast is going to offer protection. Right. Offense. You, you won't be able to buy or sell unless you're in my fence. So this is the place of security right here. But then again, divine order of giving and obeying God, and he'll send ravens to take care of me if it's necessary, but God has taught me to uh, uh, store up and, and save and uh, prophetic words of famine's coming, but I'm going to store up and have enough. And yeah. Well, that's the fence. That's the protection. Mm -hmm. right. yes. The choice is protection one way or the other. Yes. So the mark of the beast is going to be protection to those that are clueless of what God's plan is for their life. It's, it's not going to be hard for them to choose that. How could they possibly choose that felt marker 666 on their forehead? Oh, my God. Relax for a moment here. Who are you trusting? Who are you trusting? Who owns you? It's a sign of ownership. Where do you get your safety and strength? Ezekiel 9, 4, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark on the foreheads of men that sigh and cry for the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. This church is now actually in the last uh, few weeks has really begun to mourn the paganism and the assimilation into the church. How many, how many would say, man, I, I just kind of passed it off before, but man, it just grieves me now. I, I just see how deceived they are and being led into it. How many would say last year you never even thought this way? It's like, well, whatever they believe is fine with them. But now it grieves you. It's like you, you, you see they're going for this mark of the beast. Well, here, 
If I can explain the mark of the beast, are you ready for the great revelation of the mark of the beast? Here it is. Mark on the head and on the forehand. It's uh, what you think, what you believe, and what you do. And this mark's been going on for an absolutely long time. I mean, Nimrod believed something in his heart, and he was thinking he was going to build this tower, and that's what he started doing. Well, that was the wrong God. Can I tell you, for the last 6,000 years, this stuff has been going on. God said, eat of the tree of life. Eat of every tree of the garden. The devil comes along and says, well, I got another idea for you. And what Adam believed, what he thought, imagined, and got emotional about, is what he did. Is this coming? No, it's today. It's just today. Yeah, yeah, I mean, whatever's in your head, it could be stinking thinking, but whatever's in your head, that's what you're going to do. Because somehow you believe it in your heart, whether it's right or not. Did I disappoint you with the mark of the beast revelation? Is there more to it? Well, yeah, there's more to it because every generation has a different presentation of it. Will there be an end deal where you can't buy or sell? Well, probably so. But here's the point. Get the seal of God on your forehead, and that's not going to be an issue. The seal of God. Ephesians 1.13, in whom you also trusted, trusted, believe, and after you heard the word of truth, you, you, you got the right thoughts in your head, the gospel of your salvation, after that you believed, went right back to your heart, and you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Spirit of God sealed that. Is the presence of God in it, on it? Is there evidence on it? I, I was told with his stripes I'm healed. Well, that, that could be just in my head. It hasn't made it to my hand yet. Well, then I have to believe it in my heart when the devil tells me something in my head contrary to that. So this, this mark of the beast is a process. We, we, we have to go through these decisions on a daily basis. Well, I felt healed yesterday. I don't feel healed today. Well, then whatever you believe and think and do today is where you're at. The glory of the Lord hath departed from thee. But you have the security of man's wisdom. And, and some people just don't know really the difference between the two. Yeah. And then it says we have the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest or the interest of our inheritance unto, until the redemption of the purchased possession and the praise of his glory. Uh, my bills are paid. We're even making plans for a she shed. You know, I, I just, you know, it's been, it's been seven years. It's been seven years of trials and t t temptations and, and submission and, you know, so, you know, another three years, I think we should have one. <laughs> and so that's the point. I mean, evidence is, is the thing. If we have the interest of it, well, then we have to have some sort of evidence to prove that what we believe is true. When I receive healing in my body, that's the spirit of God that proved to me that what I believe and act on is true. If you're just still blabbing and grabbing and confessing, I'm sorry, the, the spirit, of, the, the dove hasn't settled on it yet. So you're going to have to go back with your thinking's not right. Something about your thinking is inaccurate. You're going to have to readjust that. And then believe what the, the Bible really says about it. And then it'll manifest in your body. You'll be able to do it. You'll be able to walk it out. Does that help you? Tests and trials. 
First Peter 1 6. I'm almost done. I only have 14 more pages. First Peter 1 6. Wherein you greatly rejoice through now for a season, a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Manifold temptations there really means uh, discipline. The temptations is really a process of discipline. Did I say happy discipline? Because it explains it that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold perishes, though it be tried with fire, you might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why does your faith need to be tried? To, to prove whether you have any proof yes. that you're a disciple of God. Yes. Is there any evidence? Right. Can I praise you for what you're doing? Right. Can, can I honor you for what you're doing? I mean, what are you doing that is, is honorable? Right. Right. Yeah. Hiding in the mountain? Wow. Cheating the system? Conniving, being a robber and a thief, drawing disciples unto yourself. Can, can I go on with the list? Well, I, I don't worship those pagan things. I just do it in the name of Jesus. Well, you're just as deceived as, as Antiochus was. That's been going on for a long time. Is there any evidence? I love that song. I forgot his name now. Evidence, evidence. Does your life show enough evidence to con help convict you of being a Christian? Right. Yeah. Tests and trials. It goes on to say now at the end of it, it's really important because you receive the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Uh, did I say the soul? Yes, sir. Yeah. Did I say your thoughts and your heart and your emotions? And yeah. is, that's, that's what has to be saved. Yeah. Well, I'm saved. Well, maybe your spirit is, but boy, your head is messed up yet. There's a lot of renewing has to go on with this. Amen. Repeat and enlarge. Spirit, soul, and body. All right. We're moving right along. Okay. Matthew 24. I think I'm on the right slide. Nope, I'm not. 13. 14. Why am I on 13? 14. I'm ready for 14. All right. Thank you very much. Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. This is Jesus giving the version of John's revelation about the four angels and the four corners and uh, the four winds. Jesus already said this. I don't know if John just remembered it and was dreaming about it and wrote it down or how that happened, you know, but here it is. He's going to send his angels with a uh, great sound of a trumpet. The word trumpet there is basically God's voice. God says this. He heralds this. It's a trumpet. Here's the message. We need to understand the message. When the trumpeter is unclear, the people are confused. Yes. <clears throat> so he, he says, now, <clears throat> these angels are going to go do what? Yeah. Gather his elect. Uh, obviously, then, apparently, the tares have already been gathered and burned at this point. Because that's what came first, if you want to go back and listen to that message again. He's not going to gather tares into heaven. He's not gathering tares to be in the barn. He's not gathering tares because they're not his elect. He'll gather his elect from the what? <clears throat> well, it says four winds. He's going to gather him from what? The four winds. He's going to gather him from the winds of change. Wow. Yeah. He's going to gather him from the wind of the Holy Spirit. He's going to gather them from the wind of... Uh, are you with me? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Because, uh, see, the wind is blowing on the church just as well as blowing on the world. Right. 
And people are making choices in the midst of that. They're either going to choose the compromise system or they're going to choose the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And he's just going to simply gather the ones that chose the Lord. How many wants to just choose him today? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't think it'd take too many brain cells rubbing together that that's the right choice. The trumpet, God's voice, angels, messengers to go forth. The wind comes, uh, when the wind, the wind causes decisions to be made and the elect are those who made the right decision. A remnant will be saved. Well, the whole world's going to be saved. Well, I don't know who preaches that. That's what we hear on TV. It's going to be a great harvest in the end. I, mm, tears? Wheat? I mean, I'm all for thousands and thousands coming into the kingdom, but I don't know, man. I don't see the evidence of it. I see mega churches growing and they're still all look like the devil, yeah. act like the devil, yeah. into entertainment, into showmanship. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. When somebody gets, I personally know when somebody gets saved, they change. Right. They don't just assimilate into the group right. with who they are. Right. Yeah. I watched this young man right here head to the altar, and it, he's changed ever since. The man's on fire. Just follow him around. You'll catch on fire with him. Amen. When you actually get saved, you change. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Anthony's excited. He, he's running all over town saying, I love my church. I love my church. I love my church. Yes. Well, he changed. If, you just, if you're just the same person that you always have been, the whining, complaining little wimpy baby, well, you've never changed. You've never gotten born again. You've learned to just milk the system for crying out loud. You've just assimilated into religion. You need to be born again. I was a great drug dealer, you know. I had... I was a leader in my community. <laughs> and I got born again. I quit my drug dealing job. Sacrificed a lot of money to serve the Lord. No, you, when you get born again, you change. And God knows that. And he's sending the angels, when the wind blows, when they're confronted with the test, when they're presented with the truth, when they have to make a choice, I'm going to watch what choice they make and I'm going to send my angels and gather them, which I call my elect, from those four winds. A remnant will be saved. I'm sorry, I backed up and preached on that. Isaiah 11:11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hama, and from the islands of the sea, the Mediterranean islands. So, you know, again, I could go through all that symbol and try to give you the names of the places in today, but you could study it out. We'll let Nate tell you. I'm tired of studying this all out, actually. I'm, okay, verse 12, and he shall set an ensign or a sign, a symbol for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather them, gather together the, the dispersed of Judah and from the four corners of the earth. Now we're seeing another gathering from the four corners. The four winds are going to be God's elect. God's elect is going to be the sign or the standard that he's going to set up that's going to convict the people in the four corners. That was a lot said, but I hope you got it. Did you get it? 
There's going to be a second harvest. There's going to be a remnant of God's faithful. They will be a sign and a standard to all nations. And then all who have bowed their knee to the message will be gathered. Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Endure what? This blowing of the wind. Endure bishop for eight weeks, nine weeks. This gospel of the kingdom, that's where this verse comes in. And this gospel, not, not, not that seeker-sensitive, visitor-friendly, everybody's okay, don't judge anybody. Not that gospel. This gospel, that he's either Lord or he's not. That you've received his message or not. You decide to trust him and not the world. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in where? All the world. For a witness, a demonstration. You have to demonstrate the gospel, not just talk about it. Yes. Unto all nations. Then the end will come. Remember the disciples came to Jesus and said, what, what's the sign of your coming and what shall the end of the world be? Well, when this gospel is finally preached in all the world for a witness, that's when. Well, this gospel of uh, the law has been done away with and you can just be a Christian and still be what you want to be has been preached in all the world. And boy, we see a great demonstration of that. But has this gospel been preached in all the world? I don't think so. I mean, have you been preaching it? See, or have you, have you been mommy that's made exception for people? Have you listened to the media that's distorted your opinion? Have you gotten sucked into, well, you know, maybe they're okay. I, who am I to judge? Maybe you've got sucked into all that. And there is no gospel demonstration even in your life. I'm on the last page. I think I only have one more slide. I would appreciate a little more enthusiasm here because Pastor Aaron is preaching next week. Do you see this picture here? I think it's great. Jesus is going to have his people and they're going to preach the gospel of the kingdom, the rule and reign of God. And uh, a kingdom has to have rules and regulations and yeah. like the law. Yeah. And the law of the Lord will go forth yes. when he establishes this kingdom. Yes. He's going to remove everything that offends. Yes. Yes. He's going to clean it all up. I wouldn't offend him with stupid belief. I wouldn't offend him with hiding your testimony. I, I, or I wouldn't offend him by trying to walk in with no testimony or with no evidence. You're not going to convince a court without evidence. So, four corners of the earth. And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized will be saved. He that believeth not will be damned. That's how serious it is. Well, what if they don't hear? Damned. Because they still don't believe. Will the blood be on your hands? I, I tell people the truth until they're done listening to it. And then I move on. Because I, I believe you believe that. Are you fearful? Oh, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, protected, rescued, in a safe place. The uh, wi winds is not going to destroy you. The winds are your benefit. I love it when the wind blows and blows all my leaves from my yard out into. <laughs> blow, wind, blow, blow, wind, blow. And I don't like it when it shifts directions and blows it all the way back into my yard. You know? right. Yeah. Are you fearful of end times? That's my question. I, I, I hope 
I have helped you here that you don't have to be fearful of end times. But those without the seal of God in their forehand, forehead, uh, they're going to fear the wind. Yes, sir. But then again, those with the seal of God are praying for the wind to blow. I mean, if I've got the a seal of God on my hand, blow, wind, blow, because they're never going to change until this wind blows. Because they're just going to keep going on like they are. So I pray winds of adversity come. I pray winds of change comes. I pray winds of temptation and see if you have any proof in your life comes. I pray that the Spirit of God blows on your life, that you finally know what the Spirit of God is in, in, instead of this emotional unction that you think you have. I mean, isn't it good to hear the voice of God instead of that, you know, other thing that you used to say, God spoke to me? I told this person over here, she says, God told me, God told me, God told me, God told me. I said, you hear from God more than anybody I know. I don't, I pastor the wealthiest, healthiest church in the region, and I don't hear from God that much. She finally realized, wrong God. It was just her own desire. A lot of people are still dealing with that God. When the knee bows and you just listen to him, it, it actually gets a lot easier. You don't have to prove yourself. Because when, when God says something, he follows up with it and does it. Mark uh, 16, 17, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick. They'll recover. And then the Lord says, well, I'll tell you what, I'll just, uh, as you go forth, I'll work with you. And, and I will confirm my word with signs following. Thus, we are moving into the greatest evangelistic team in the region because there is a lot of fearful people in the world. And we can go forth with a message that you don't have to fear tomorrow. You don't have to fear another day. But you will have to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, which isn't that bad of a deal because after I did, it's been working quite well. Did you get anything out of this today? Father, I thank you for the four winds, the four angels, the four corners. It's a, it's a joy to my heart. And Lord, uh, just keep opening those seals up in the day that we're living in. We need, we need the winds from heaven. We need these four angel messengers coming. We, we need these. These are the hosts of heaven that is helping us and working with us and ministering spirits that are sent forth to those who are heirs of salvation and have the seal of God in their forehead. And they that are doing the will of God. So we give you praise. We thank you for it. And we say thank you for unfolding, unlocking the revelation, the apocalypse of these things that is going on in heaven all the way back from when the heavens was open and we saw, saw the living creatures and the, and the elders and we realize it's a now thing. Yes. Help us just see this whole thing as an exciting, wonderful experience about the kingdom of God. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I call you blessed. I... Um, Amen. Thank you for letting me minister to you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn it over to some pastors and the kid and the deeks for a while here, you know, so amen. Reverend Connie, come and um, um, amen. Wow. Thank you.